So, what you're trying to say is that you fell here from another world? But when you wanted to leave and go on to the next world, your path was blocked by some unknown god? Outlanders, your journey ends here. Who are you? The sustainer of heavenly principles. The irrigation of mankind ends now. Just like that, a god took away my sister. Some kind of seal was cast upon me, and I lost my power. So while we used to travel from world to world, we are now trapped here. How many years ago was it? I don't know. But I intend to find out. When I woke, I was all alone. Until I met you two months ago. Yeah, Paimon really owes you for that. Otherwise, Paimon likely would have drowned. So Paimon will do her best to be a great guy. We should head off. Let's get going. Don't be afraid. It's all right now. I'm back. Is he talking to a dragon? <gasps> Who's there?
you've actually got the power to go up against the dragon. Are you a new ally? Or a new storm? Jean, what's the hurry? I thought we agreed to meet them here. There have been sightings of storm terror outside the city. Once we meet, we must... Relax, I'll lend a hand when the time comes. Jean, I brought them. <sighs> Quite rewarding, no? We've seized another temple from Storm Terror's grasp! I can take care of the rest here. You go take care of other things while I'm at it. See you later then, bye-bye! There's no way Hilly Turtles organized an ambush like this themselves. Not with their limited mental capacity. <laughs> Thus you were behind this. Knights of Avonius, always so inefficient. Agree to disagree, but your involvement in this just made things a whole lot more interesting. What is to be sung transpired in days of yore, when the Divine Archons still walked the Earth? A dragon cast his curious gaze on the world below, as he parted from the heavens that gave his birth. The dragon sought truth amongst common folk, but mortal trifles only fogged his mind. The wind-born bard strummed his strings dolce, and the holy lyre answered his questions kind. The dragon was but a child full of wonder, and soared the heavens free from care. The bard's songs invited him to sing along, for he yearned to let all perceive him fair. Enchanting legends the bard and dragon were, but the tides of despair soon engulfed the land. The lion fang perished, and the falcon flag slept, as a vile dragon approached Mondstadt in the stand. Over the cathedral loomed death and his friends. Of the people's agony, the bard soon sang. The soaring dragon heeded his grave calls, and amidst the windstorms a brutal war sprang. Blood of venom sent the sky dragon into slumber. Only to awake to be expelled in abhor. Why do people in this age loathe me so? But the holy liar replied no more. Wrath and woe, vigor and venom, poured from the dragon's bitter eyes. The dragon's curse sprawled in silence, but the liar could no longer soothe his cries. He was once such a gentle child, now so full of rage and suffering. I also came across a teardrop crystal. Can you purify it?
Please! What are you doing oh, here? No, run! Oh no! We're busted! Run! What? Follow me! in your eyes. Sadness that speaks of your yearning for this song. We are communicating. Huh? No! Don't get bored! Do not be fooled by him, dear dragon. He loves you to rot alone. Now, he attempts to deceive you once more. Let your wrath fester! Mondstadt has already turned its back on you! You! You were planning this all on to have me slain! No! Listen to me! The time has come for the dragon to serve its true master! <laughs> While you beware your pragmatic selves, watch the world tremble! Devalin. Since we flew like this together, how huh, Devalin? Just now. Why? Why did you not ask me to protect you like the last time? Me not wanting you to listen to the Abyss Order doesn't mean that you have to listen to me. Freedom, if demanded of you by an Archon, is really no freedom at all. Is this the power of the Animal Archon? But I am no longer part of the Four Winds. Even if that's so, you still protected us regardless. Now spread your wings of freedom and go with my blessing. And so, the Storm Terror threat was quelled. I clarified the misunderstanding to the citizens of Mondstadt and let them know that they are safe. To them, it seems Storm Terror attacked Mondstadt out of nowhere and then vanished just as quickly. They must be finding the whole ordeal very confusing. However, winds change their course. Someday, they will blow towards a brighter future. I 
atone for these sins for the rest of my life, it would still not be enough. <sighs> oh, give it here. Should get going. That trick I used to repair the holy liar. <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. What? <laughs> you tone bar! Hey, don't go! At last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. <laughs> Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Resident rodent beats invasive vermin! <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. Absentee Archon of Mondstadt. How impotent you've become. That smirk you wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's face? Uh, you should have held your tongue. <sighs> so, this is a gnosis. Wouldn't be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste. <laughs> when the beholder has no taste. <laughs> Fenty! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for. Come, before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. <laughs> There you are. Dealing with you will be the easy part.
I hope your watch over Mondstadt remains unclouded. I do not know if I, or the rest of the world, as you had hoped for, have become stronger. Huh? Hans Archibald. Uh, uh, my true name? How did you know? <laughs> I can hear the wind blowing in the Mare Javari. I always believed you existed. Will you hand me your old friend's spirit? Mondstadt transpired the story to be told, where a tyrant ruled. I met a boy not that old. The lyre he played, and for a song he sought. But storm walls blocked blue sky, he was sincerely distraught. I do so wish to see the birds in flight, said he, his strong eyes filling with light. But his voice was lost in the howling wind's churn. For the whirlwind takes, and gives not in return. The true sky, and songs that cageless soar, Were they not wishes worth fighting for? So the boy turned, extending his hand, Let us cast down the tyrant and his walls from this land. The young boy raised in the flag of revolt, And I threw myself into freedom's tumult. Victorious were we who fought to be free. Gods fell, winds whipped, nations shook violently. In the smoke, a despot met his doom. And we watched as his great tower fell none too soon. Mondstadt began anew, the story passed down. And since then never has another worn its crown. I almost fell asleep waiting. <laughs> As usual, my predictions are correct. You, yes you, come with me. Huh? Are you some sort of door-to-door -door fortune teller? <laughs> Sorry, but we're not really interested. You're not from this world, are you? <gasps> Once, there was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir, tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she was deceived, and the memory of her noble origins faded. She now believed that she was the queen of the Kingdom of Darkness. But take heart. A second crowned heir had already taken up the path where the first had stumbled. This is the story of your journey. Of your tale to be told. Whoa! Look at all the people! <laughs> We gotta get up front! We can't see Squat back here! <laughs> the hour is upon us.
Rex Lapis has been killed. Seal the exits. to run hey buddy hold still stop stop come with me To the blind, <laughs> everything may not be as it appears. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. They say that when Lady Ningguan ponders important affairs, she retreats to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources, dig through documents, looking for information? Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling lizard. As the fragments fall, Traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyue, like ink stains in white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. Swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing it Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected. <laughs> well then, I'll be taking more access gnosis now. <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You, 
You beat me to it, didn't you? <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Lyra, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. are no more. Now we may commit ourselves fully. Careful now. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? 
I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. Thousands of years ago, the Adepti and I fought against the turmoil that plagued every corner of this land. <gasps> Guyan Stone Forest, where I sealed many gods with my spears. After so long, naught but folk tales remain. Oh, Sile, you and I were foes. But our ancient grudge is but a bygone memory now. May that which Havria has left behind be yours to subsume. And thus another spark of divinity departs from Liyue. My legacy shall now be left to those who come after to debate. Another ten seconds, too, sir. Still hiding. Huh. Now who's the cheater? <laughs> All right. Ten seconds, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> strike zone was very large, covering the entire countryside of Mondstadt and Liyue. The meteorites seem to harbor a strange power. A power that sends any who touch them into a deep sleep. The guild believes the meteorites to be highly dangerous. Hi! Uh. Sounds interesting. Mind if I join you? What ho? We meet again, Vagrant of Inazuma. <laughs> My retinue and I were just... The first time the Millilith were present, I had to forego the chance to strike down Mondstadt's savior. This time was a perfect moment. I was mere seconds away. But who was that mage? She could not have known who I am. Perhaps her powers are real to her things unseen. Soldiers! Sir! Sir. Find them, and when you do, Another one? My lord! 
It's happening again. This is the largest one we've seen so far. They just keep coming. But so be it. Move out. Change of plan. Your prior objective remains in force. Continue to research the meteorites. My lord, leave them to us. We will make short work of them. Are you deaf or just stupid? When did I give you the right to issue your own orders? My, my apologies, my lord. Now move out and complete your objectives as assigned. With ropes, we can scale mountains. With boats, we can sail the seas. By age 40, I had conquered every last domain. Pylos Peak alone defeated me. As an adventurer, and well, maybe in other ways too. Now, I am approaching the end of my life. Many times I have sat and stared up at that peak as the boundless snow slowly engulfed me. It is a beast without weakness. The merciless face of the world, it fills me with fear. And when an adventurer loses courage, they can no longer climb mountains. My mountaineering days may be over, but I have a greater ambition now. Humans create tools to conquer nature, and when nature conquers them in return, they create better tools. Where our legs cannot take us, maybe our tools can. And when tools fail us, perhaps wings can carry us instead. My dear friend, I leave you my designs for the wings of incompletion. Against the unknown, humanity stands as one. To be alive is to seek, to set foot in every place that the eye can see. I have little time remaining, though the wind has not yet come for my soul. But between us and your children, students, and friends. I believe that someone will reach that place at last. So, so cold. Hold on just a little longer. Huh? Uh, uh, fire? Fire! Warm! Wait! Watch out! Most benevolent among all Adepti are the Chilin. They drink only spring water and eat only whole grain. But perhaps the mountainous dwellings of Adepti in Joyung Karst might be too lonely for her human side. Under moonlight did one see her last. She stood by the precipice's edge, and upon the mist-veiled mountains she gazed. Her thin figure was immersed in the vast sea of clouds. One noticed her loneliness and sought to convince her to go back to the human world. But just then, she said thus. Leoa Harbor feels even lonelier than Juyun Karst. When I look at the sea of clouds in Juyun Karst, I merely feel the loneliness of a solitary cloud gazer. When I step into the sea of people in Liyue, I feel the loneliness of an inhuman that doesn't belong in the human world. In ancient times, Liyue was a land of misery, where the shadow of evil loomed large. 
As slain gods festered, their vengeful wrath cursed the world, manifesting in infernal forms. When demons stirred, miasmas, monsters, and mutations infested the land. Then Rex Lapis summoned the Yakshas to vanquish the demons. They swore an oath. Restore order through slaughter, purge evil through battle. To this, we dedicate our lives. Eons of bloodshed later, karmic death weighed upon them, phantom wrath seeping into their broken souls. They went mad with fear, turned on each other, or succumbed to the darkness. Of the five foremost Yakshas, death came to three, while the fourth vanished without a trace. In the millennia since, one conqueror of demons remains the sole surviving Yaksha in the mortal realm. And only on moonlit nights, in the glow from Guyan, and in the sound of the Dihua flute, is his memory preserved. The Windbloom Festival originated in the Crown of the North, the City of Freedom. Oh, we gotta bring enough supplies this time, otherwise you'll go hungry again. <laughs> so, if you're asking me... Unofficial business? We're grateful to you. As are we to you. Funny, we haven't gotten together for a meeting in a while. It's been so busy lately. What should we do on this day? <sighs> Mr. Albedo! How's the research going? We've had a few issues. Well, have a look at this. No. Of course, any good tavern offers bar snacks. Hmm. Really? Hmm. How should we do it? Who should we do it for? Quietly? <laughs> or boldly? Make the first move, or trust a chance. Huh? My answer is this. So long as we can both share fond memories, it doesn't matter. Let the heart decide. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
will meet again. Though we need not rush, brother. I have more than enough time to wait for you. <laughs> we have always had enough time. In our last tale, Rex Lapis was walking alone in the mountains. He heard a remote voice, unlike any other, coming from a crack in the earth. Most of the ancient Geo life forms that live below Liyue are blind, having not seen the sunlight for an age. The voice was sometimes sad and song-like. Other times it was loud and thunderous. The Lord of Geo searched here and there before finally unearthing a strange stone from the bedrock. That's how Ejdaha was. I answered his wish and took him above ground. The Lord of Geo took pity on the rock spirit and carved it into a magnificent work of craftsmanship, a vivid representation of a dragon. I bestowed him with a pair of eyes to see the world, and came to an agreement with him. With his fingers, he made two eyes, quicker than words could tell. Lightning flashed and thunder roared, and a living, breathing dragon soared into the clouds! I agreed to let him live among the people above ground. But if the day ever came when he brought ruin to order, he would once again be sealed in the dark. The dragon accompanied the Lord of Geo, fighting campaigns alongside him in the four corners of the world. We have a saying to eulogize these events. The crash of a spear brought billowing dust. The mountains and waters made way at the sound. The sight of a dragon bestowed with a touch the promise of rainwater Blessing the ground. Huh? Huh? Listen. Uh, the missing uh. miners are here. Uh. Uh. Well, what are they digging for? Uh. Uh. I'm afraid that this whole tunnel is the fruit of their strenuous labor. Huh? That gate? Has it been there all along? Digging a tunnel to this ancient seal. Had they not been discovered, they would undoubtedly persevere to the gate. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 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 
whole bunch of islands. He was once a good friend of mine. One day he asked me about a sword art of which he had heard, the Musono Hitotachi. I told him it can only be witnessed when divine punishment is administered. It is the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's skill, a symbol of ultimate power. But he replied, there must be one who can withstand it. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. Then, the vision hunt decree arrived. People's aspirations were stripped away as the Raiden Shogun began to construct her ideal of eternity. While I was fleeing from place to place, I heard that my friend had challenged the vision hunters to a duel before the throne. A solemn yet brutal challenge. The defeated faced divine punishment while the victors gain a second chance. Perhaps he thought he of all people should make a stand. Coming face to face with the Musono Hitotachi was all that he truly desired after all. When I arrived at Tenchukaku, the duel was over. I heard his sentence of divine punishment, his severed blade hitting the ground. Perhaps that was the glory he had yearned to witness. In his last moments, what expression was on his face? Before I knew it, I had stepped forward and snatched the dying vision and was running from the scene. All I knew was that I mustn't let his hope, which burned so brightly, become buried among the ice-cold statue of a god. <laughs> 